Hey there everybody, thanks for joining me for another One Man Review. Today I'll be taking a look at the brand new book out from Nobel Route Press by Tyrell Waiters, Vern, Custodian of the Universe. Um, anyone who's watched the channel f for a while knows I'm a huge fan of No Brow Press, especially their older books when publishing costs hadn't got so wild that they started having to do um, paperbacks. But they still always have great paper, great reproduction and stuff like that, and always have like interesting artists and interesting stories. So anytime No Brow puts out a new book, um, I'm going to be jumping on that and grabbing it. They do a lot of books also that are very kid-friendly and geared towards a young audience, uh, but uh, that are still enjoyable for adults because of just the quality of the writing and the art and stuff like that. So I really appreciate that about what seems to be kind of their mission is to make these very touching, very thoughtful, very well-made, well-written, well-drawn, well-produced books. So this, this book's no different. It's a little bit, the art in this book is a little bit less bombastic. Well, I shouldn't say bombastic because they never really have bombastic cars. It's a little less refined. Um, it's a little clunkier, but it's really good for a kid's book and fun for a kid's book. So it's fine for that. But it's not like John McNaught or uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other no-brow artists. That, um, the person who did Dalton Monsters or Lorena Alvarez or a lot of these other artists that are like really kind of peak artists. Uh, coming out from No Brow. This is, well, you know, this is kind of standard art. But it's it's a fun story with a really good kind of lesson in the middle of it. So this is Vern. Vern's been in San Francisco, and he's coming home to Florida. It seems like he's just graduated school, and so is now going to, planning on it, going, enjoying being unemployed and hanging back out at home. But his family has different ideas about his unemployment. So his grandmother sets up an interview with Quasar, which is a company in town that his grandmother and grandfather supposedly used to work for as custodians. So he here he is, and this is where you can see, you know, the art here is like you get the idea that this is a big science building, but it's kind of goofy and not like the best art you've seen. But it's it's fun still. It gets the idea across without like uh, overworking anything. So here's here's Quasar. And Vern's coming in and he's getting introduced to what, well, the duties of what he thinks his job is. Um, here it says, your grandmother wrote you an amazing resume, which is, I think, an odd bit of dialogue. I would think uh, an, an amazing recommendation letter or something. I don't know why grandma would have written his resume. So there's a few little things like that in the writing, too, where it seems like this is somebody who has managed to like get a comics job right away and hasn't had to work in the world very much or something i don't know there's some weird little things like that about like how the world works like you don't your grandma doesn't write a resume for you or if she did and the employer knew about it <laughs> that wouldn't look good for you uh but other than a few little things like that it's a real fun story so here we have now he's being introduced to the deep depths of what quasar does which is they do multi-dimensional travel and this is a jump pill which will allow you to instantly teleport to another universe and it's his job as a custodian to now keep this this place clean and safe which is a hell of a job to get thrown into when you're getting these multi-dimensional rifts opening and you have to go in and clean up like the eye goop room from another dimension so he's thinking oh my goodness i've got into a hell of a thing here. Why did Grandma set me up for this? Vern goes into the room with this jump pill in the middle of it and notices that the cord has been unplugged. So he pulls that. And I don't want to go all the way and give a lot of spoilers, but this is because it's a brand new book. But I do want to give you a setup for what the story is. So then after he's got this job, Vern plugs this in and causes a multiversal accident, basically. Uh, he meets a character called The Void who charges him with going back to reality and finding an answer to the question, what is the point? So this book becomes like a really nice meditation on nihilism and existentialism and these kind of, these kind of worries about the meaninglessness of life, especially in the face of like uh, culture saturated in multiverse stories, which make life 
particularly meaningless because there's always a you know another chance out there i the the piece that me and sean did for told to tell number five i did a bit of writing about the problem of multiverse stories uh, on on just the human psyche and uh, this even though this is a multiverse story it's like a lot of other multiverse stories i'm seeing right now like everything everywhere all at once where it seems like our society is starting to wake up to the problem of the multiverse, the the kind of ethical, moral problem of thinking about the world in that way. And it's addressing that in some sense in this story. So I think that's cool. Uh, but basically we get that by reactivating the machine, you've activated all the old link machines across the multiverse. You've brought several universes too close together. And when they're brought close, universes will wreak havoc with each other's environment. So now Vern has been tasked with, as a custodian, going and cleaning up the mess he's made by plugging in all the other multiverses. And that's really where the book takes off and gets extra fun. So you get, like, right at first, he's dumped into another version of Florida where everyone's an alligator. And you just get a lot of really quick jumps to a lot of really, you know, other wild dimensions that allows the artist to have a lot of fun and just trying to go around unplugging all of these things. Um, the one that I really, really liked is the AI universe that he jumps into here, uh, where there's this big kind of unimind computer. And I think this is like the core of the moral of the story for kids, even though there's still about half of the book to go. I think, you know, with, with the type of story this is, uh, I was a little skeptical about, you know, the absolute relativism that could be being taught. But really, this has some great advice here, and I think also some great advice. This is a, a book that's obviously by a creator of color with the you know main character being a character of color. They kind of make a, a deal about that um, in the advertising. I don't think it's on the back of the book, but in the advertising, they were making a big deal about this is a black lead by a black creator. And so I, I was a little worried about that, too, that it would be that kind of message, which I feel like you know, creators of color kind of get stuck with their books always have to be about the social issues that are very real social issues. And that seems in in a sense like it, we need those stories. But if that's all that ever comes out, it's actually its own trap. And so I really appreciate that um, Tyrell Raiders actually pushes back against that a little bit in this story and gives a really good lesson to kids, I think, in this one bit. So I want to read it. You are not just Vern. You make up a part of this infinite, complex multiverse. Who's better to answer the Void's questions? As for running home to your mom in Florida, while well, worlds change, teeter, burn, and rebuild again every millisecond amidst all of this flux we survive. So really great kind of lessons there for kids in the face of a pretty nihilistic world at the moment. Um, and then... For some, it is harder than others, by natural means or by injustices. So, you know, it's not all just injustices. There are natural means. Some of us are immortal constructs with distinct advantages over those with mere flesh to exist in. Either way, all we can do is our best to improve ourselves and look after that which is important to us. So I like that he builds in, like, yeah, all this stuff is real. There are all, all, all these things that make life harder. And some of those are natural and some of those are done by other people. Um, but this book isn't a book about that. It's a book about moving on in the face of that. And I really, really like that. You know, this is a book that instead of preaching about what the future should be, it's just operating as if the future we want has come. And I really, really like that. And so I think it's, you know, great for kids. Uh, then at the end here, I'm not going to read it, but there is a point, you know, Vern does get a point and it's a very, very good answer. Again, a good moral lesson that he's able to teach the void. And then I think also at the end, it's really smart is that Vern still has his job. There's still a multiverse out there. So Tyrell Waiters has set himself up to, if this is a successful book, and I think this is probably what, what the property like this you're hoping for, is that you'll have a sequel to this, that this is a YA property, that Vern, the custodian of the universe, can go, out, go have more adventures with more lessons. So I could definitely see, like, Vern, the custodian of the universe, and the blah, 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 you know. And I would definitely read it. I would get it and read it. I really enjoyed this book. I think Tyrell Waiters is showing a lot of promise in the art, too. You know, like I said, there's some things that 
I feel like early on are a bit clumsy, but by the end of the book, you start to get some really impactful, fun compositions. Um, I think a lot of the stuff with the void and like these kinds of things look really nice. And he's settling into his style a little bit more. It's it's a little bit more obvious what the approach is. And so I would like to see more. Um, I think this is a really great, great book. I think it could become a great series. And Tyrell Raiders is a really compelling creator with a really, you know, I think great message to share with the world. So I would highly recommend this book, especially if you have kids that you want to share your comics with. I think they use the word ass in here once if people are worried about that kind of thing. Um, he says like, you know, smart ass or something like that. Um, or he's a badass cat, something like that. But other than that, it's a totally kids appropriate book. Really, I think great, you know, my opinion, a great message to share with the world and just a lot of fun while it's at it. So definitely consider this. No Brow's a great publisher and Tyro Raiders is making a, a great addition to their lineup. So uh, hopefully that will continue going if it get, we can get throw enough support at it to see more of this creator in the future. If you enjoy what we're doing here on the channel and want to support us, there's two ways to do that. The first is through our Patreon. We have two different tiers of support there. At the first tier, you can get early access to all of our videos. At the second tier, you get exclusive previews of the books that Sean and I are working on, our private art sketches, things like that will go up on there. Uh, you'll also be able to participate in our ongoing webcomic experiment and help control the story for Prane Day. We really appreciate that. Any of the money that we get from the Patreon just helps us buy the books we review. So we just turn that back into other publishers and creators' pockets if we can. Uh, if you want to support Living the Line itself, then the best thing to do is support what Sean's doing with Living the Line Publishing. So we'll go ahead and take a look at one of his projects now. Salah Niyalo, Path of the Shades by Clarence Doss is a really cool ongoing project that Living the Line will be producing. Clarence is a PhD student from Fiji who's studying the myths of Fiji for his doctoral thesis. And part of that study project is that he's producing these comics. They're kind of like Hellboy, where there's these little short stories that capture all of these different mythologies. But then he's using that to wrap the project into his doctoral thesis and then provide educational material where people can come to these comics. You know, they don't have to read his PhD thesis. They can come to the comics and get a more consumable version of the mythology of Fiji. Like and subscribe and hit the bell, please, so Carson can finish reading his books and let me go home. <laughs>